Hello everyone, this is Linda again, and welcome to my channel. Accessing the Google APIs using ASP.NET Core can be a little tricky to set up. I have seen a lot of questions about it on Stack Overflow over the last few years. Today I thought we'd look at how to set up the Google ASP.NET Client Library with ASP.NET Core NBC. We can then use the Google People API to display the username of the currently authenticated user. After all, if a user logs into your application, it's really nice to be able to display their name. My name is Linda Lawton. I'm a Google developer expert, and I have been answering your questions about the Google APIs on Stack Overflow for a long time now. All the code from this video can be found in the companion blog post. A link to that and any other links mentioned in this video can be found in the description section below. Let's get started. I'm currently using JetBrains Rider for my IDE. This coach will work the same if you are using Visual Studio or any other IDE. Although I can't guarantee that the shortcut keys that I use will be the same. The first thing we need to do is to create a new project. You'll need to use the project type of ASP.NET Core MVC if you want to follow along with my code. In order to use the Google API.NET Client Library with ASP.NET Core, we will need to add a few NuGet packages. The first being Google APIS Auth ASP.NET Core 3, which will add all of the authorization and authentication communication. Then we will need to add the Google APIS People Services package, which will give us access to all of the methods needed in order to access the Google People API. The Google People API is a free API from Google, which returns the profile information about the currently authenticated user. It'll also give you the information about their contacts, but that's a video for another day. Links to both packages are in the blog post and the description box below. Did you see what I just did there? I tend to use a lot of the keyboard shortcuts with my IDEs. I find it increases my productivity. The keyboard shortcut to hide and show the NuGet window in JetBrains Rider is Alt plus seven. And Alt plus seven again will close it. Now we will need to configure the authorization. We will need to add a client ID and client secret to identify our application to Google. To do get one of those, you will need to create a new web credentials on Google Developer Console. If you haven't done this already, go do so now. If you have any issues, I have another video which will explain to you how to create web client credentials on Google Developer Console. Just make sure that you correctly configure the redirect URI for your application or you may get the redirect URI mismatch. If you do get that error, I have another video which will walk you through in two minutes exactly how to fix it. It's a configuration issue. It is not an issue with your code. Okay, welcome back. I assume you now have a client ID and client secret for a web application and you are ready to get started. We need to configure all of our authorization inside of the startup CS file. To do that, we will add a constant for the client ID and client secret. This works fine for now just because we're testing, but you should probably add it to app settings or maybe secret settings of some kind just to keep them private because you should not be sharing your client ID and client secret at any time. Now we need to configure the service. In the configure service method of our startup CS file, we will configure the authorization for ASP.NET Core 3 within our app. Notice how the client ID and client secret are passed to the add Google open ID connect extension method. This will allow our app to use Google's open ID connect authentication and authorization server in our app. The last thing that we need to do in start of startup CS is to ensure that both use authentication and use authorization are configured. Remember, authentication is when the user logs in. 
This is OpenID Connect. Authorization, on the other hand, is when we request permission from the user to access their data. This is the consent screen, and that's OAuth2. Now let's go add a method inside of our controller so that we can access this. In the home controller, I'm going to add a method called user profile. This method will build the service we need to access the People API using the credentials that we set up earlier in startups. Yes. Now that we have a service, we can call the Google people get method. The people get method doesn't work like the other APIs do. With the people get method, you need to tell it exactly which data you would like to see. It doesn't just return all of the profile information in one go. For example, if I would like to see the user's name or the user's address, or their email, for example, I would have to supply the fields that I would want. In this case, we only want names, so we're just going to send names. But this is a comma separated field, so technically you could add more. I recommend that you check the documentation to see what other options that are available for this parameter. Now, as it is currently written, it's not going to request authorization. So therefore, this method will fail. We need to add the Google scoped authorized attribute to our method. This will define which scopes that we will be requesting of the user in order to access the data that we're trying to inside this method. So you need to check the documentation for the method that you're calling to find out which scope is needed to run that method. In this case, we're just using names. So all we need is the scope user info profile. Again, this is a comma separated field. So you could technically send more than one scope. If this method was, for example, accessing the people API and the drive API at the same time, you could send both of those scopes. Finally, I've just added a simple view here, which will just display my name. Okay, let's run the app. Notice how I sneaky added just a little menu item here so that we know we can click on our, uh, our method and call it. Okay, it's at this point where you might get the redirect URI mismatch error to avoid having to explain this issue in all of my videos. I've created a short video which explains how to fix it. It's a configuration issue. Don't worry, there's nothing wrong with your code. Go check out that other video and it'll explain to you exactly how to set the redirect URI properly. Well, there it is, that's that. It's now displaying my name inside of my application. This same approach can be used with all of the Google APIs. You just need to create different services for the different API that you're using and make sure to request the correct scopes in order to access the methods. If you'd like to see a video on how to do this with say Google Drive or Google Calendar or even the YouTube API, please let me know in the comment section below. I'd be happy to put up new videos dedicated to each of the APIs. Well, that's all for now, and I hope this video helped you understand how to set up the Google Client Library with ASP.NET Core 3. Please remember to like and share. It really helps me to know which videos you enjoyed and you'd like to see more of. And please consider subscribing if you'd like to see more of my content related to Google development.